further. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, both teams, a lot of emphasis on the stuns at the moment. I'm a bit worried Five that the lanes on Elephant, their side lanes in particular, could be a bit weak. I mean, you've got a Mars mm. Lion now, a lot of stuns, a lot of kill threat. Omni plus one, often very difficult to kill in the lane. And you're an Earthshaker, like you have very minimal laning stage impact. And you want to try and pair him with a position three that has a lot of self-sufficiency. So that can enable the Earthshaker to make these rotations. Five Pretty damn good team fight as well here on Invictus Gaming now, especially with the Mars picked up. He received yep. some slight nerfs, but you've still got some very strong combinations. It also means that the Lena in that position to roll is a lot less effective, notably IG picking it up Radiant after the Earthshaker back. came out. So you know that this uh, this Lena is being played in a core role and well, Lifesteal is one way to get out of that. You know, you just pop the Rage, walk on out. You're not super vulnerable at getting uh, burst 100 to zero. So I don't mind it. It also has to say, like, probably one of the best Earthshakers in the world is FY, so we're not 100% sure what the lanes are going to be. Is it going to be Earthshaker paired with a Lifestealer? Probably not. You know, this leads me a bit more towards believing FY is going to be playing in that position 4 role with this Shaker. And so, what do they need? They need a self-sustaining position 1, uh, sorry, position 3, for Yang that's just capable of staying in the lane for a little bit longer. Maybe, honestly, Brewmaster's still pretty good here, right? You pop the Cinder Brew down, you use the Fissure to make it pop off, and then you can just walk away and let the Cinder Brew do its work. Yeah, Omni Knight's not going to have as much kill threat, so I think you might get away with the greediness on the Brew. Traditionally, I'd say if you're against a position 5 that offers a lot more enabling potential to get kills, if Brew solo, then that could be tricky. They honestly could actually play the Earthshaker with really the Life Sewer in that lane. Uh, Mars and Lion, mm -hmm. yes, Double Sun's great, but if they remaining. ever go on the Life Stealer, you can always disrupt that jump with the Fissure and then look to reset. And Life Stealer probably by level 4 should be fine. And he is that self-sufficient laner as well. Like you will get to the stage where you're going to be okay. The question is, is that can they punish him through honestly level 2? There's high kill threat if they put the Earthshaker in that lane. So there's flexibility in the supports. There's a lot of scaling potential in those supports as well. Once they get items, they're going to do a lot of work. Hmm... I wonder if they could go like an axe here for Yang, because they still don't have something that's going to be able to reliably take Ancient super quickly. And you've got a Shadow Demon on the Dire side, so I feel like you need to take advantage of that. Um, again, it, it, we don't know where the Shadow Demon's going to be, so yeah, maybe that's a bit off, but I don't know. I feel like he, it's one of the few advantages that you have on the Dire side. You know, you, you obviously have the Roche potential on Radiant. You've got the comfort of being able to play the way that dota should be you know from bottom left to top right but they... i don't know it just seems a little weird all right so we're looking for ig's Dyer one uh ursa's looking against uh, against shadow demon purge it's a bit awkward but we saw the life sealer match up yesterday with fly fly against the uh against the ursa and fly fly just absolutely dominated that was against a night stalker in the lane and he had it an absolutely free game but remaining. you're on radiant gives you a great way to take roche i'm a huge fan of storm and Five ursa because remaining. storm is by far one of the best ages carries in the game and radiant ursa can enable that pick. there's the ban so love that from elephant there's probably two of the best carry heroes to play into the life stealer now you've got to backtrack a little bit now you're not getting kind of that top tier one heroes that you're looking for here for fly fly what do you even go here uh, uh... PA, maybe? Ten seconds Something remaining. that's quickly able to burst down the back lines and has a pretty Dyer decent man-on-man -on -man matchup against gyro the Lifestealer. They kind of go the Gyro instead. Not the greatest at building up stacks, for sure. Um, on, again, on the Radiant side, this Lion. Kaka, he's going to have to be, you know, leaving the lane a fair amount, and with this Mars, depends what the lane is. And, you know, you mentioned self-sustainable. Lifestealer certainly is capable of doing that, but... You know, if Earthshaker gets off a good five Fisher stun, if remaining. it is going to be a Shaker 5, then Mars is totally capable of just dying in that lane super early. Axe, like you said before, it has to be a Blink initiator. Okay. I okay. like that a lot. I like that a lot more. That gives you information advantage now. Uh, a great... Uh, the silence destroys Invictus Gaming. You get... Uh, that's a beautiful pick. You get over the arena... You can build blink so you're an infest carrier. Again, I'm going to keep harping on information. We saw yesterday that 
the supports had so much, so much impact, especially the Shadow Demon. So if you can pop the smoke, or if you can have this advantage with where the enemy team's positioning, then it can help Super in how he wants to position, and it can help Lena and Earthshaker earlier as well. This is, it might get punished in the first five minutes because it's not the self-sufficient Lena, but... If they can get over that, I really like this last bit. Five seconds remaining. And it is being paired together with, uh, we're going to see an FY Earthshaker. So a bit of a blast from the past back at, what, TI-8 is probably the, the best showing of all time that we've seen from an Earthshaker. But, uh, well, we'll see if he's able to continue that three years forward. I, with the Shadow Demons, were they position fours in the previous games that we, uh, mm, we cast? Or was no, it four and five, a mix of both? Yeah, four and five, because Lennon was playing it for a game at mm. least. So, yeah. yeah, okay. It is a lot of information, though, that you're going to get. Like, as soon as any kind of smoke pops, when, you know, Elephant are making any kind of rotations, bam, he's just going to use it, just to make sure that Super's in an advantageous position. You do have a lot of burst capabilities right now on IG, so any kind of way of disrupting that. Elephant definitely want the longer fights coming out here. Once Flat Cannon's on cooldown, they're so much weaker. Once you pop the Finger of Death, much weaker. Arena of Blood gone, much weaker. Whereas you compare that to the uh, the Dark Ascension, which, oh, correct me if I'm wrong, I want to say 30 second duration on the... Uh, on Dark Ascension, yeah, it is. And then you've also got a Lifestealer who's going to be very sustainable in the laning stage. You've got a Lena who's got the Fiery Soul continuously reapplying it. And then we've seen with PYW on his Earthshaker, even though it didn't net them the win, you're still able to just have a huge impact from the backlines with something as simple as a Fisher into an Ag Shard with Aftershock. And then when okay. it's your moment, when the BKBs are gone, when the Rage is uh, used, and maybe Storm's a bit low on mana, that's when you can make your real move with the Echo Slam. Right, so we, we're going to put our money on the line here. What are we saying? IG, Elephant, who, who's going to come out on top in game one? Huzzah! From the draft, I prefer Elephants, but they didn't put on the best showing, it has to be said, against RNG. And IG looked very impressive for mine. Even though they lost their first series, it felt like a little bit of would you call it tilt any pre-15 minute gg is tilt that yeah, is, that is always ig though like they they will always tap out when they really really believe they've had enough like they they're they're a team that isn't going to put themselves in a mental strain where you know this game goes on for longer than they think it has to and, you know sometimes that's questionable because yes 15 minutes is is super early but you know they're one of the few teams that i think is really only doing that man the ball's on Eurus to just walk up into that mid lane he scouts out the fact that there's an observer ward here so very nicely done ollie gets that nice deep sentry ward down into the small camp as well the battle begins he's gonna be just fine looks like it will be a two for two you see the emphasis that they're, they're putting on to secure yang a better lane i, I was looking for a second i'm like hang on, where's fy going or what's the Urshaker doing I, I thought they may have been able to get a kill but the emphasis is on him making sure that he can pull the creep way back multiple times with the fissures and i was bringing up in the draft a little bit worried at least about this first five minutes for the night stalker and we see it looks like elephant can enable it at least the first wave and and maybe afterwards with the creep equilibrium they've already blocked the small camp as well so unless Oli preemptively dewards it then this is a big advantage here for elephant now really nicely done so the lane pushed well back compared to where he might opt to have it. The homing missile is going to come out here onto Yang. He shouldn't be in too much trouble, though. Not so fast. They've got a lot of damage, though, yeah, with those nukes. He's got plenty of tangos, though, so I think he should be fine. See how this mid matchup fares. Two incredibly skilled position twos in Somnus and Emo. Still uh, feels like a little bit favored to the Lena, however. Yeah, of course. And uh, already having enough money for the bottle, which he could send out to himself, has the magic stick queued up as well. It's exactly what you need against this Storm Spirit. And then on the top side, we've got Kaka Super in a bit of a battle for this uh, lane manipulation. JT is going to be able to get a spear into the trees here. Is it going to be enough? 
Looks like with the good old right clicks, Kaka. Gonna have enough mana in a couple of seconds with the stick charges. Look at him playing with fire. But he recognizes he can pair that up with the fairy to give him that bonus health to help secure first blood. Looks like he's gonna try and deny himself as well. It's a long time on the sidelines though. I mean, it's only level one though on super. So I don't think they're in a position where they can go for a kill on JT. So that's just fine. We got some real classic heroes from, from either team. Emo Storm, Kaka Lion, FY on his Earthshaker, you know, Somnus on the leaner as well. He's been playing this at a pretty consistent rate when this hero was uh, through the past, what, three, four months, I'd say, he's been pretty busted. Somnus has loved the good old leaner. And such a heavy commitment as well from the Elephant uh, supports. Oh. They can tell that they've got this sentried up, I believe. <laughs> Just not wanting to let him get the free right click onto it. Elfi gets it anyway. And that's both water rune secured as well. That's the disadvantage of make it all... Okay, it is in range. That's the uh, disadvantage of denying yourself to the neutral creeps. Kaka was out of the equation for 25 seconds, which meant that Super could make that rotation to secure the, uh, the top lane. And now, JT is still in a little bit of trouble, but he should be fine. And you see they're not really enabling JT at the moment. I mean, they, they got that kill on Lion. Karka TP'd mid. He mainly had to, to go Bounty. mid because of the, the Earthshaker showing that just in case of a, a fissure on the low ground, then that would have put Emo in a, a really peculiar position to get to safety. But both supports are just, you know, they're kind of ditching their side lanes at the moment. And a little bit of a different uh, skill but coming out here from Flyfly as well, putting the two points into the Rocket Barrage, obviously thinking that they can get a few more kills early on, but with the way that this has gone, even with FY's absence, they haven't been able to. Mid lane. Misses the stun. But he does the block. Still at least gets the block here. The glyph up the creep wave too, just to maybe help out with some extra damage from the creeps if that's enough, but Oli no keeping in. He's got Purification, I the Heavenly Grace, you. and... But, you know, Emo should be held back up to a respectable health pool, but still continue on with the battle around the mid lane here as even Super looking to get involved. Karkar's going to join the fray. So much emphasis on securing the water runes. We know these position twos can take over games, and the supports want to enable this and want to disable this for the opposition team. Oli stacking up the poison. Maybe he can go for a deny here, but FY. The boots advantage, not able to get on top of him with the chant totem. And now Kaka, he's brought Super down pretty low. Fortunately for Super, hasn't been able to stack up the poison just yet. A spike up in a couple seconds. Still Super doing the dirty work. FY doesn't have enough mana here for any more abilities. And chant totem actually, is that enough damage lockdown? Super still just gets the kill before he dies. What is going on? This is the aggression that you like to see. It some really good like little mind games happening in the mid lane as well somnus making sure to bully out uh storm spirit preventing him from being able to pick up any of those water runes but emo he's doing a good job even under tower of securing a lot of cs so even though he's sitting towards the bottom of the cores this lane could have gone a lot worse for him considering how heavy the support rotations have come from the shadow demon as well as the Earthshaker. Eurus up top gonna take about half his health pool drop down here and as well, I mean, you see the Mars is getting a little bit more out of the off lane since he's been solo compared to Yang. Only 20 last hits on the Night Stalker. But now that it's nighttime, we see kind of the first real involvement after the start of the lane here from a support coming down to Yang's lane. And, and Flyfly is going to be really careful because Super, oh, he can just lock him in for the banishment. And, and Yang's got three points in the void. So Flyfly is going to be a Gornik here. As soon as you get that first night time, you need to show some prowess and pick up the kills and that they've done already. And not even just that, you know, all of the previous support rotations have meant that uh, both Ollie as well as Kaka have had to TP down to help the Storm Spirit to make sure that Emo has a decent lane when they make a rotation onto the Gyrocopter, the core that you want to scale into the later stages of the game, you don't have a way to protect him. So that was a very easy kill for Elephant. Super. <laughs> no. Oh, he's actually going to get away. He, he got rid of the haste. Almost got himself killed there, but he's, he's done the dirty work. No refill in the bottle. He pings out the fact that this bounty rune is still there. I'm sure Somnus will want to push this lane a little bit forward first before 
Departing. Oh. Emo, Laguna play, couple oh, right clicks. Emo just disjoints you. the last. So close for that kill, however. Look at these creeps, what are they doing? They're following them all the way down here. <laughs> we, all this emphasis around the, the mid lane. I mean, I, at least we're not seeing 2v2s mid. I absolutely hated that stage of the mid lane. Was not fun to watch at all. So, at least it's a little bit different than that. The stack's starting to build up, but... Oh, oh actually, they do get the kill. Oops. Sunness and FY. The long-term pairing, being able to come Radiant's out clutch. And, I mean, attack. normally I'd feel like, all right, this is okay. You've still had your gyrocopter on the bottom Missions. side. He's looking to make an aggressive movement, but you're not going to kill a Night Stalker at nighttime, Night especially Stalker. one that was allowed to have as much farm as Yang did. I'm really surprised at how well the uh, first five minutes went for him. And you haven't even secured, <clears throat> excuse me, the later stages because the first point in flat cannon only went in at level four. There, I don't think, have been any stacks outside of this hard camp, which Storm Spirit's going to need to take to recover. Well, they've actually brought Emo up top here as Eurus. Feels a little desperate. This is, yeah, very desperate. We do see often, though, that, you know, Storm's... Their early patterns like to be you hit level 5, go back to the jungle, use all of your mana to get level 6, refill on the base, Radiant then TP out to a side lane. Attack. This has been how, th that's really how Arbed's Storm Spirit has been so successful in a lot of tournaments here, where they can, you know, pick up an advantage early, oh, killing wow. some of the, the side lane to then further enable maybe their position 1 or position 3. So Emo attempting that, but a little bit off the kind of stereotype of how it's usually done on a storm and you know maybe a bit obvious then yeah i mean he's Double normally damage. the storm spirit would have a little bit more farm than that though right he didn't even have the power trance there's another attempt on the bot side <laughs> only just Why eating not? the laguna blade jt has to tpr fy however he's got an answer to that enchant turned him to cancel the tp fy he's even gonna yoink the kill but hey you can't complain this man on a position for Earthshaker. you give him the gold and he can potentially win you the game and that is a nine minute tower being taken on the bottom side getting full use out of that double damage rune really like that from somnus still got a solid minute of night time even though the dark ascension isn't available but man, is he how close is he to building into is he going uh, an Echo Saber here on the Night Stalker, or is it just a... He wouldn't uh, that Mage Slayer, would he? Uh, it's, it's been Echo into Mage Slayer from what I've... Oops, Somnus. Uh-oh! Not the higher ground you want to run up to. IG, hit back. It's a big kill to find. Also taking the stack away and a bounty, so a lot of gold swung towards the Radiant side. Yang just TP's on away. Call down used. Flyfly Fly essentially has no items at this point. Mid lane as well. Immediately... They're on top of FY here, Super with the banishment. He doesn't use it on FY, but still he's actually standing his ground and turning. He's already used the Echo Slam and that's not enough to burst down Emo. All right, he's recovered. He has indeed. This game was looking at a stage where it could be very difficult to come back, but what was a 3,000 net worth lead is now been cut down to one. Still an armlet though, so you're a little concerned right now if you're uh, IG Dyer's and you're coming up against Eurus. He's just going to be so capable of fighting against a Storm Spirit while he still doesn't have too much mana. Of course, Mars doesn't have any of that real team fight positioning, so if you're just running into him, there's not too much that he can do about it. They're still not making any stacks as well at the uh, at the Ancients here for Flyfly, Fly, which I'm mm. a bit surprised about. I mean, Somnus is taking his own stack at the Ancients. Not the easiest person to clear, but, you know, at least as the game goes on, it will get a lot easier here for the Lena. He's actually going into a Chrysalis here on the Gyrocopter. Very interesting. We are seeing a lot of people favor this kind of casual Chrysalis. It gives you a ridiculous amount of DPS, and it, I guess he feels like they're lacking that. I suppose so, as they smoke up right underneath a Dire Observer Ward, so they know the rotations are coming towards the top lane. Eurus, he understands that he's probably got maybe this range creep to go before he needs to get out of dodge. Not heresy. Maybe one more. He wants that siege creep to die, but uh, I think it might be a little bit ambitious. 
TPs. They need to be at the ready right now from Elephant. If Radiant I was them, I would be trying to get someone up here preemptively. Okay, so they got Dark Ascension on Dial. Uh, Lena and Shadow Demon, how... They don't have Earthshaker's TP, so yeah, Eurus is going to get out of dodge here. Took them a... Trying to get the turnaround. Mid lane? Yeah, I was going to say, took them a bit to get set up at the tier 1 mid, however, so there's no real trade coming, but maybe with them already getting a formation around this area, they could look to take an, an advantageous fight here for Elephant. Things are coming out. They, they know Yang's there. Yang. Yeah. Yeah. They've got the stun lockdown onto the Lion. Spear doesn't clip on the Night Stalker, so they can't push him away out of the AoE Sans. Trying to target down Eurus, but Emo unable to get the jump before the Rage. And this is your Dark Ascension now. Use maybe IG if they can look to reset with this big ultimate wasted. It's a nice side step from Yang. They're even going to chuck out the purge as well. Just the constant poke from afar is so difficult for Karkar to deal with. But luckily enough, he's got Oli hand in hand by his side. And it looks like with the Dark Ascension expiring, now it's time for Emo to zip on forward. Straight on top of Somnus. Arena not going to lock back Eurus though. He's got the rage. They're able to look to rally around the back line here. Now they can go back in. The banishment controlling Emo. Burnt out of his mana, but again, still, they've got the Oli protection here with the Heavenly Grace and the constant purification heals. It's just mid wars. Ten heroes mid. Die even gonna glyph up. They've had enough. somewhat happy to do it. Because, I mean, they, they don't have mana on their Storm Spirit. They don't have cooldown. They don't have Mars Ultimate. But, I mean, conversely, they don't have Demonic Purge. And it's still daytime for the next two minutes, so... Both teams kind of happy for a, a nil-all draw to come out of that one. So we see though, any items that you're Nothing's looking fine. for to maybe break this game open in the in the next couple of minutes? Uh, items to break the game open, Echo Saber definitely can. I feel like <sighs> perhaps it was a, a little bit of not so ideal positioning there from Somnus. They had the shadow, uh, sorry, the lion low a couple of times. Uh, with the use of the Void, with the use of the Dark Ascension, but if you could time a Void and a Laguna Blade together onto the Lion, that would have been enough to take him down, and I think that would have enabled them to continue on forward. Which, you know, speaking about Karkar's Lion, 1,700 gold in the bank, the close to the Blink Dagger. FY is a little bit further away. He has committed for the, the Arcane Boots, but, you know, they're still neck and neck in the net worth regard. Going in. Emo. A lot of men are burnt out here. E Emu? <laughs> just wants this arcade. He's just going to swing on over past the tier 1 tower. Why not do a flyby? That's just the mental warfare there from Emo. He's like, yeah, you know, guys, I really don't care about your tower. At least it's not yesterday's game where we had fly fly against flyby. Oh, I mean, there were was... times where I got tongue tied a little bit there. Yeah, I felt, yeah. I, it always feels weird as well when you say a word that's super similar, like back to back. It's mm -hmm. so confusing. I was like, a bit worried oh, no, back about... and back are the same word, though. Yeah, I know. All right, all right, all right. I see what you're doing. You think you're funny. Car car. Oh, oh, car. Still just going to get caught, but there's no one to extra follow up at the moment until car car's finger of death comes out from the western side there. I thought he was just a bit out of range, but in fact, car car was not. Now, with that pick off, they can try and lead this into the T1 towel. The only issue is, is that it is nighttime. So Elephant, especially Yang, fighting shape at the moment. But the Echo Saber completed. They're looking to get active here and reinforce the T1. But Emo not going to give them the opportunity. Straight on top of the back line. But the Echo Slam stopped the Storm Spirit from being able to zip out to safety. And now Yang can target down Karka. A two hero advantage here as it's also the reveal of the BKB for Somnus. So JT's next up on the chopping board as Elephant, a successful defense of their tier one tower. Man, that was excellent by FY. They know that as soon as Storm Spirit gets onto you, if he's not able to get that Electric Vortex immediately, it's not queued up. That Echo Slam, instant cast, you're able to follow up nice and easily, and it completely nullifies the effect of having that uh, Blink Dagger available. You know, they just burst him down before any kind of ground control could happen. And the perfect timing for those items to get picked up as well. I mean, the BKB, the Echo... Eurus just completed Sanj. He even just blocked the Ancients on Eurus as well. He's really trying to minimize whatever farm Fly Fly can get. Speaking of FY again, probably the... I mean, he, he did such a small thing, right? But I would still call him the star of that team no, fight. Just star, having the presence sorry, of mind to instantly Echo Slam, realizing that if he Emo. wound up any kind of cast, he was dead. Zip on mid. 
She's got a lot of mana to play with because of that fairy's trinket, but you just see it. If you don't jump the shadow demon, then whoever you go on, you're wasting pretty much all your mana because they're, they're going to be saved. Dagger available now on FY. He can maybe afford to play a little bit further back. Now that he uh, he has that in his arsenal, of course, still a minute away from having the Echo Slam available, but right now he just wants to continue pushing this lane into the tower as much as possible. And, I mean, you've got to feel somewhat reluctant to try and defend this because it's still nighttime, three minutes. He would have shown that he's got the uh, the Blink Dagger, and Somnus, he's able to just comfortably sit here on the front lines with his BKB and whack away at the tower. So 17 minutes, tier two available. Gives away the outpost at the cost of their tier one but I don't think you're overly concerned about that. No, you're not at all. I mean, Eurus is still farming. You've lost control of your jungle at the moment. We might see Dyer make a play to smoke Dyer's up and try and reoccupy the, the top side of the map here. There's not really concern at the moment, though, that Dyer can take Roshan. I guess this will really start not to come yet. into fruition when Eurus picks up the Deso. Oh, Eurus? Exactly. That's it. That's what they need to do. They just need to position themselves behind him, like FY is right now. He's just pump faking the Fisher constantly, just in case there's any kind of zip forward, whether that be from the Blink Dagger of the Mars, or if it's the Storm Spirit himself. And yeah, that's going to be the key timing for them, because by taking the outpost, you've kind of forced someone on IG to go towards the bottom side of the map to be able to take that back. Otherwise, this experience lead is just going to continue to grow and grow. Oh, and for Kaka, he actually went for a four staff as that first item. So big issues here. Now potentially being able to control the Night Stalker, get out of that AoE silence uh, against the Life Stealer as well to kite him. Maybe against the you know four star, so the the Fissure stun setup into like an LSA for an example. Unfortunately though, if you get the demonic purge off, there's there's big issues here for this defensive ability. Oh, for sure. And even in that position five role, super seeing how valuable it is just to have that Aether Lens available. Every single part of your toolkit really loves to have it, and it just enables you to play that. Oh, JT. That tiny bit safer. JT oh, they see him. is in Wait. a bit of worry. They heard the... Okay, JT, unfortunately, he's going to get brought down. Yang, great use of the Dark Ascension. The... I'm surprised he just didn't blink away into the TP because you, you hear the Dark Ascension. I mean, as soon as I hear that, I'm like, why do I hear boss music right now? <laughs> and then I just start to panic and leave. Somnus? Radiance top tower is uh, under you got to hope there's no detection here. That's... <laughs> He's got oh, a sentry on Wait, is he going to solo kill Emo? Two points in the Laguna Blade. Is the damage going to be enough? Emo just disjoints the last right click. Now he's got a BKB. Maybe TPR. He's mana. staying around for a little bit too long. Is the BKB oh, going to cover out the TP? The right clicks, the crit. Wow. Ever so close. We're feeling a little rough right now for IG. 6k net worth lead. They were able to take back the outpost, and it was before the uh, the threat of the, uh, the Desolator into Roshan was there. So, I mean, there's there's something going their way. Only 300 gold away now on your to bring him up to level 15. Smoked up and instantly again. The supports nullifying their attempt to find this initiation and just an instant blink out from Yang. Now, they don't have the Dark Ascension. There's also a DD in the river. Maybe Eurus can pick it up before Flyfly does. JT the backline. They've caught out Somnus. Instant zip forward. Super Silver, the banishment on Kuna. They're able to burst him down for the massive echo. FY. So much damage, but where's the follow up? Elephant. They've already retreated further and further back. JT jump in. Buybacks have to come in handy now from Elephant. They're going to look to turn this one back around. Fissure locks in 2 once again, but Oli with the constant sustain. They're pushing them further back now as Flyfly. Immense amount of damage on top of the Gyrocop. The crits after crits after crits. As Yang, it's enough for him to make it back to safety. The echo was almost enough to turn it, but again, the story of the supports. It was the story of the supports. The Echo Slam was on point by FY, but he called it. Where was the follow-up? He unfortunately had to wait to use it. Still a couple of seconds left on the uh, on the Blink Dagger cooldown before he could go in. And unfortunately for oh, Elephant, no, that was enough time that they needed to take out Somnus. Just off point with the Fisher as well. It split the difference between the Storm Spirit and the Mars, so neither of them were locked down. That was the damage that they needed to take out this pesky Lena. And we see Somnus, you know, maybe Silver's Edge might 
make his positioning a, a little bit better, or at least a little bit easier, I should say, just to, you know, stop the storm from finding that jump or, you know, the Mars or the Lion. And we've also seen this item get huge buffs as well. You just don't need to buy anything to do with crit anymore. It's great. Yep. It's in build. Radiant are scanning. Yeah, it really feels great. This here, this uh, I feel this like you, you would go into like an MKB after that. Mm -hmm. Fits well for me. You know, you know, a gyrocopter likes to build into a butterfly. Mars, even if he pops his shield up, you're gonna still be doing MKB damage. Smoke on smoke. Somnus in the river. Very deep. They're going to spear push him further away from Super. What a play from JT. And now Emo zips on the back line to prevent the Shadow Demon from getting the defensive banishments. But still, they can target down JT. Infested up as a Night Stalker. Is this going to be enough help to keep him alive? It's not. And Yuris, now with the Rage on cooldown as well, they can target him through the flurry of stun lockdowns. Another successful team fight for Invictus Gaming. Emo, he wants more blood. A zip on forward. Do they have the detection? The sentry's nice. there. He'll drop it. But unfortunately, the vortex to drag him back in the range is not available. So, a few Radiant's things for Elephant there. Uh, I don't think it's safe to walk through the river at any time, especially when you haven't seen any of IG's heroes for at least 15 seconds. For me. And two, that was another fight where FY unfortunately was just off point with the Fisher. The way that he put it down meant that... Uh, since he still doesn't have the Aetherlands, actually he's changing into a blink, blink Dagger build here on Super just so that he can get closer into these team fights. He wasn't able to get the save in onto the uh, the Lena. So twice now, as soon as Somnus dies, they're just in such a vulnerable position on Elephant. They smoking up again? Or is this just a maneuver that's not smoked? Yep, so they're looking at top who Yang is underneath an Observer Ward. Long zip in off the mark from Emo. It's at daytime. I think Kaka might have just revealed himself. Also, they've got the Observer Ward to the left there, above where the old T1 tower top used to be for the Radiant. Dire. Continuing to look to take a fight. Emo trying to target down Somnus. A little bit away from the support, but they've caught the backline air fly. What a jump. A Fissure on two, setting up for a beautiful Echo Slam. And they're the two key components to bring three. down, but it looks like IG still looking to take the fight. Straight on super banishment, delaying a little bit of the stun lock here. Emo, he's used a lot of his mana as well. They need to find the kills fast now, otherwise they might have hung around for a little bit too long. Cut him up to the northern side. Somnus, back to safety he goes. Have to be a little yeah. careful here on Okay, JT. they're jumping in, JT. Still got heroes nearby, but Fly Fly's not in fighting shape, and I mean, Emo's gonna zip in. They'll just target down the gyrocopter, and he stuns Yang. He's got the answer. The nighttime void to cancel the TP. You That's Roche. the dead of night. Oh, it can be. Still not quite feeling it yet, even with the uh, the Desolator. That time around, FY spell casting was on point. Small area there from Emo as uh, the Earthshaker tries to make the TP out. He didn't TP all the way back to base like he might be reactive to. He TPs to the Tier 2 tower, so he's still able to rejoin that fight. Gets the stun in onto the Mars, blocking him off from the team fight. Allows the Lifestealer to join in, so really nicely done. Well executed team fight there from Elephant. Oh my and it just god, Yang. Look at this damage. <laughs> It's a lot of damage. That Echo Saber is building into the BKB as well. But uh, it shows the difference, right, of what happens if you're not able to 100 to 0 the Lena. The damage difference potential is enormous. Yeah. Um, exciting though, these two TI representatives just a bloodbath here. 27 kills, 25 minutes in, constant team fights. Money to burn. Still though. A couple of times where Super's positioning, like it's it's nothing to do with his positioning. It's just kind of like how the fight broke out. He just wasn't in the right place at the right time. But uh, he's only 300 gold away from being able to pick up that blink dagger, that sentry ward on an observer that had about two seconds left on it. It's definitely going to help. No, IG. Feels like this next big fight probably going to occur around the Roche pit. Oh, the backline again. again. Lena's, can they 
commit down on Somnus so BKP pop Yang's falling incredibly low the bonus health coming through from the infest but still Yang will fall at five once again the current initiation a massive echo slam but Flyfly is able to turn a fissure will bring him down unfortunately all is sustained he wasn't able to utilize the purification along with the heavenly grace Radiance middle tower They're not going to get attack. it. As Kaka gets back into the base, FY going for that last ditch effort to try and clean him up with the Aftershock, having picked up the Aghanim shot as well as his uh, Blink Dagger, even setting up into the Yule Scepter, which can be quite nice. You know, if you get that uh, Storm Spirit jumping onto you with the Orchid, great way of displacing him for a little bit and allowing your team to help. I, I'm still not crazy about them choosing to take that team fight right then on elephant because they still had a solid four minutes left on their night time right you just picked up a bunch of items for Eurus, sure but shadow demon was less than 100 gold away from uh blink dagger and i believe night stalker before that death was only 200 gold away from his bkb that would have been a very comfortable team fight win if they'd waited for that yeah well still nonetheless though net worth lead continuing to grow here the side of elephant they are looking like with how Don't fy has been able to put them on the back through the past previous team fights been some gigantic echo slams and again it's just really the tail of the supports if if car car and ollie are the first to fall if super and fy are the first to fall as well from elephant it can just be a completely different tale as again around the middle lane just walking in what different could it be Kaka jump in this time they can drag back Eurus great answer from Yang with the AOE silence it prevents the four up stun lock here on top of the life steal so it enables him to get the rage and now they can turn once again infesting up Yang oh, giving him the bonus help but they're on top of fly fly only was it nearby to protect him the mobility and the positioning just not there unfortunate for the Omni Knight I mean this is this is what now you expect, though. He's got 2,700 net worth. He doesn't have as much farm as the rest of the supports this game, so how he can position is a lot more difficult to keep these cores alive, and it costs them there. It does. I mean, they even got a fantastic spear off, pushing the lifestealer all the way back while he was stunlocked, but just didn't quite have the damage to take him down because of how that start to the game went. And, well, it's only become going to become even harder with this Aegis the Immortal picked up. It feels like now uh -oh. with the Shadow Demon having Emo. the Blink Dagger, that's what's going to protect Oh, Somnus. He went for the Silver's Edge shit. Nice to pop the BKB. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Oh, he's going to Satanic as well. Talk about survivability. IG. They're all underneath this Dire Observe Ward as well. Everyone is getting scouted out. And we've, we've seen how important the jumps are. The information, it's it's always Dire's favor at nighttime. They're smoked up, infested up as Yang. 30 seconds, and that'll actually take them... There'll be a slight little window where they don't have nighttime or Dark Ascension. Build himself in this mid lane. FY, he has emo. the Echo Slam. Emo. Oh, Zip instant on the back line, but they've Hello? got the answer in the silence. And Emo. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, they, they saw them place down the ward. So he. I, that's a big kill to find. They saw him place the ward. They saw that they were in mid lane because of the Dragon Slave being used on the creeps. But, well. Again, 15 seconds of daytime and no Dark Ascension, Radiance but they don't care. They're just going to take that. They realize how important Emo is to a lot of their their damage in these team fights. And unfortunately for him, he wasn't able to pop anything that could have saved him. No stick, no essence ring, still on the it treads and taken down. It really feels like until Radiant are able to pick up these BKBs, I, I can't see how the fights get any different. Like this is the big switch that's going to come through the team fights. Jairo's looking for his oh, JT. Actually finds Somnus. Once again, another fissure just disrupting the damage in this shield. And now Somnus can turn to find Fly Fly as well. Ollie's nearby. Storms up in five seconds. If they cut the fight further and further back, maybe even JT can look for a buyback. And again, FY! This constant chain lockdown. He's got the control. They'll get on Fly Fly. Oh my god. FY is so goddamn good. Yeah, I mean, that's why you picked this man, the Earthshaker. It's finally gotten back to this meta. It, of course, it's still going to be vulnerable against the likes of the, the Zoo Dota, where it's just going to overrun you before you can come online. Radiance but goddamn, his attack. positioning in some of these team fights after those first two has been phenomenal.
It's just like Radiant are all on bursting one hero down from four to zero. And the Fissure's preventing that. The Banishments are preventing that. Maybe even just you know, getting the, the Infest bonus health is enough Storm. Lucky it's daytime. That only three seconds silence duration, but we've just seen how these fissures are completely disrupting the damage and the the flurry of stuns that need to come through from IG. I mean, it's getting to the point where I mean, he's going into a rapier here on uh, Gyrocopter after the BKB, but yeah, you need to be very preemptive about using your BKBs. You might think it's a waste, you know, if you're if you look like a fool because the Earthshaker wasn't there, but the amount of times that FY has just been in the perfect spot, I think you just have to buy the bullet and say, look, we need to use these BKBs so we're securing the kill. Otherwise, you know, a lot more of these ganks are gonna go hell this way. And it's gonna get even easier now. Satanic picked up. Lena's even got a grow bow. Makes her game a whole lot easier. FY is... Oh, okay, there we go, actually. And FY's even got spider legs, so more mobility, but... You know, Storm at least has BKB completed. Gyrocopter's got BKB coming out in the courier as well. But again, though, Dire, they're wards. Another lane ward that is just no, scouting no. them out. This no, triangle feels so like the only available. safe area for them right now. It's very close to picking up the arcane blink as well on Yang. So he'll have the ability to abuse that dark ascension duration. It's got an extra 10 seconds now at level 10 if you talent into it. And then, of course, reducing the cooldown. Eurus no pops the smoke. Emo frontlining. He's got to be so careful about his positioning. The potential burst chain lockdown heavily putting faith in his support. Somnus? Wait, he just TP down here, Kaka. Got the jump. Oh, oh no! The Earth smack, he jumped okay. over. Okay. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. That is, we've seen that a couple times. The Earth spike, when you, when you hit the, the peak of it, you can spear them over the arena. <laughs> it just shows you the value of don't chain your spells together right <laughs> they, they are still stuck for a little bit while they're on the ground but uh yeah that was close if he got away i don't think it's gg territory but you know the the moral damage would have been done yeah without a doubt i mean <laughs> if, if get i was leader i would drop the question mark again <laughs> Oh, you reckon that's uh, question mark territory? Even a tip as well, oh, or yeah. just the question mark? Just the question mark. That's all you need. Okay, not not insult to the wound. Dyer's middle no. tower is under attack. Leave they already us. feel bad enough. All right, well, DD Emu can give the bottle over to Fly Fly. So we will see Invictus Gaming have this potentially for the next fight they still have their nine second bkbs to reveal as well uh jt's down to seven but they looks... hold out for rapier territory though that's the big question for mine i feel like that might be a bit too long i mean they're trying to funnel everything they possibly can to fly fly oh okay oh. well yes. that's when you drop the question mark in team chat mm. <laughs> Evo is. He hasn't had the uh, the greatest showing this game, it has to be said. You know, the, a rough laning stage, a few times where he's been caught out on his own, and then, well, that just uh, is the cherry on top. Dyer looking to smoke up. Some items completed for themselves as well. Eurus, however, pretty close to the nullify. Looks like they don't Night feel time. like this is enough for them to wait for. Is with the nighttime hitting, Elephant looking to try and get a powerful position around the triangle, but raiding as well, they're nearby. They've got the ward on the high gun. Yang instantly yeah. blinking full. The Arcane blink, so he gets the lower cooldown out of the ultimate. Nice the Fly Fly, the instant BKB. The is getting chunked! Fly Fly! Oh no, doesn't even pop the DD. The BKB doing nothing as he got ripped apart. Eurus and Yang. <sighs> wow. Yeah, turns out that Demonic Purge is a pretty damn good ability. Guardian Angel wouldn't have been useful for anything. Could have maybe gotten the Heavenly Grace off, but I don't think that would have survived him. Now you have Dark Ascension back up in uh, about 50 seconds here. Gonna get pretty almost a, a full uptime once he hits that 25 talent. And if he uses it with the Arcane Blink. So, I mean, this is one of those situations where... 
I feel like if they had a Paladin Sword, this game could be very different for IG. But the fact that they don't have a Paladin Sword and they don't have any form of lifesteal on the Gyrocopter means situations like that can happen. You know, they need some form of passive lifesteal going on during all of these ganks. You know, your side gun is still going to be firing. Radiant's and finally he does buy it. You know, it's going to delay his rapier, of course, but I feel like you just need it. Dyer are scanning. Well, these out of towers now claimed his elephant still continuing to pile on the net worth lead. Invisibility. Radiant are scanning. It's a medium length roast duration respawn and Oh, you're Life walking up high ground without again. vision. Again, look at the damage coming through from Yang and Eurus. Flat Flash just going to get ripped apart. Almost the identical thing. Eurus and Yang, the couple together to bring down the gyro. They'll kill off Oli, a double fissure, and they've had enough. Calling quits before the Lion of Mars, even fall on the deck. What an execution from Elephant in our game one. Yeah, uh, turns out that Shadow Demon's pretty damn good at combating the likes of an Omni Knight. I was talking about the Brewmaster in the draft, but if you're able to get away with it as a support that is also so versatile with just consistent saves, great scaling, why not? And uh, the game kind of went as expected. Lena having a dominant lane, supported, of course, by the supports. And uh, yeah, unfortunately for the Gyrocopter, those couple of early points into the Rocket Barrage didn't net them any kills. Yang had a very good laning stage, and they just weren't able to transition it into any kind of farm or net worth uh, advantage. We saw that it just felt a little bit easier for Elephant to stop the initial jump from IG. The Fissure from afar, Super's positioning is also... I mean, the Heavenly Grace is feels like a, a much shorter cast range than, than how Shadow Demon can, can play these fights and just made it difficult for IG. Like they were trying to burst that one hero down, but Elephant were able to just keep them alive long enough. They could turn from there. That was kind of the story of the mid game, the supports. And then it just got to a stage where the cause, they had so much damage, so many items, and it was you know too far gone, unfortunately, from Evictus Gaming. But it, nonetheless, it wasn't a bad showing for them though at all. Like it was you know, not a draft where they were out of it. And it feels like we've really been seeing that so far through the group stage. It's like all the drafts have been very, very even. It just comes down to, you know, teams are executing and we are just seeing how impactful these supports are. So I really wonder, like, you know, we, we saw a lot of supports banned out in the first phase of, of, the, of game one. You know, I wonder what's going to be the difference here in the second game. Yeah, for sure. And I wonder how much longer China's going to value this Omni Knight, because it feels like if you're picking it in the first phase, it's being consistently counted. So maybe going for something like your position four and an off laner, or it depends, you know, if you've got the last pick in that first phase, could be worth picking up your mid laner then. And then once the, uh, the bigger counters towards it are being removed from the pool, you can still then go into the Omni Knight, have a lot more team fight sustain without worrying about the likes of a Demonic Purge or a Brewmaster or an Oracle or something else, just getting rid of the, basically the big reason why you go for something like this Omni Knight. Well, incredible showing here from Elephant in their game one. They're able to topple Invictus Gaming in 37 minutes. We get the classic FY Earthshaker. It's good to see him back on one of his best heroes. And boy, did he show up in this game. A beautiful victory from them. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, game two between Invictus Gaming and Elephant will be up. 